My crypto here. I hope we're all having a wonderful day. I know I am. Everything is absolutely green. Remember, please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any further videos and hit that like button. You'd be doing me a massive favor. Remembering I'm not a financial advisor and none of this is financial advice and none of the information provided in this video should ever be seen as a signal to buy or to sell. Now looking at the fear and greed index, as we can see, the market cap, the total market cap of crypto is over that 2 trillion mark. It's up 4.5% and we're seeing the 24 hour volume up 28%, which is absolutely huge. We've got a BTC dominance of over 50%. And as we look, the crypto fear and greed on quant 82%, which is extreme greed, but we are waiting for that leg up at some point. I know a lot of people are still getting frustrated with quant right now, but I am here for the long term. I don't really look at the short term moves, even though they are quite exciting. I have other bags that provide that feeling that everybody is looking for those big green candles. And we move over to the crypto bubbles. And as we can see, like clockwork, we're seeing quant's rank drop. And as we know, Back in 2021, we saw it dive on the rankings and then it does its own thing. It kicks off when it kicks off. I'm just waiting for that moment. And as we can see, the market cap is $1.49 billion with a price of $124. We saw a high yesterday at $127. It's down 0.9% in the hour, down 1.5% in the day, but still up 18.9% in the week. Now, we see this great post from Sebastian Breakout and retest from huge weekly triangle. We can slowly put on the party hat. Ladies and gents, we are so far successfully retesting the upper border of this triangle and attempting to flip the 0.618, the magic ratio there, fib level into support. Free daily candle closes outside this triangle and so far taken place, which is absolutely bullish in his opinion. I'm aware the triangle can be outlined differently by others, but it's about the same across the board. Along with this are several huge wicks reported across several exchanges, which indicates the demand is growing slowly but surely things are lining up for our favorite coin all indicators are in the green so it's time to go don't listen to the fudsters and don't get shaken out volatile moves are normal in this stage of the market which in turn feeds the fudsters to post more crap and unfounded claims Quant Network, written and set up, dedicated overledger connecting to ETH, Bezu, and Hyperledger Fabric simulating a central bank ledger. Deployment of beta version overledgers authorize key management and transactions signing solution. Made more than 500,000 API calls, 33 new API endpoints created, six functional categories defined and built. One new form of smart payment has been developed, 7,652 notifications generated. 1,595 errors made and sent and logged. Collaboration with five private companies, including Barclays, MasterCard, Amazon, Revolut, and Worldline. Development of unique CBDCs and smart contract specifications containing over 25 functions and over 25 supporting APIs in Overledger. How can you argue with that? And he says, no, you can't. And as we can see here, there's that crossover. And are we looking for a big step up? Well, we'd have to wait and see because I saw this this morning. Binance moved 27,000 quant. That's three and a half million dollars from their hot wallet to their cold wallet storage. This was eight hours ago from the time that I posted this. According to this article below, Binance could be providing institutional clients with cold storage. Now, we can see here, that 27,000 here moved from this hot wallet to Binance. So we're looking around here and we can see it entered into this cold wallet and it's somewhere down here, I think on page two. If we have a look, we can see that 27,000 just sitting in there and we can see that just here, 27,000 quant leaving the hot wallet to the cold wallet. Now, why is this so important? Now, I found this article very, very interesting. This was a year ago and it says Binance will allow institutional investors to keep collateral off the crypto exchange. Institutional investors can post collateral from cold wallets to with Binance custody the crypto exchange says and as we can see Binance will allow institutional investors to keep their collateralized crypto used for leverage positions 
off the platform. The exchange will enable investors to post collateral with Binance custody, which will hold the assets off the internet in cold storage wallets. Binance said in a statement on Monday, once trades are settled, the asset would then become accessible to the user again. The feature called Binance Mirror could be a major blessing for crypto investors trading in leveraged markets, as most crypto traders have to keep their collateral on exchange for trading. However, using cold storage wallets means that users can continue to trade crypto during volatile sessions without massive outflows on exchange. Users' assets would also be protected against on-chain hacks to which hot wallets are vulnerable. The collapse of Binance rival FTX in November prompted fears about crypto exchanges' ability to keep users' assets safe with regulators probing FTX over the misuse of customer funds, which we all know about. This is an exercise to build trust among institutions that their funds will remain safe, which is only positive. It's a positive development that shows Binance is moving towards becoming an institutional focused crypto exchange, said Marcus Phelan, head of research and strategy at crypto services provider Matrix Ports. However, this might not be enough. Exchanges will likely have to work with external custodians to completely eliminate risks around collateral ownership. And this was also reported by Bloom. Now, this is very, very important in my opinion, because if we are seeing that there is interest from the institutional clients now, we also think that that's happening on Coinbase. And now hopefully we're starting to see some funds being stored for institutional clients on Binance, which is also very, very exciting. And we can hear here a discussion with regards to what is actually happening. Again, I'm a little bit confused on how this will work because it sounds like something you do with the DEX. Um, Maybe they're using smart contracts, maybe ZK. I actually want to give this over to Will because his hand was up first. And I think the rest of us are, hmm. We'll give it to Sam after as well. I think the important thing here is it's for institutional investors, right? And institutions, That's you know where their address is. So if you really need to go get that collateral, you can. Oftentimes with retail and smaller players, it's hard to go get that collateral back. So they force you to put it on the exchange. And the nice innovation here is in the wake of FTX and a lot of other exchanges going insolvent. This means any counterparty to FTX or to Binance, excuse me, can keep their collateral off the exchange, right? They can hold it themselves or at least have it with Binance has a key and then you have a key and then you need at least two of three to move the collateral over. So it's an important innovation here. And this is something we see in traditional finance, right? Where you're you're making trades, you're making uh, loans, and oftentimes you can hold on to your collateral or use a third party service in order to use that collateral when you're executing a margin trade of some sort. The question here, of course, which we we're debating during the break is how is this configured on the back end? It's Binance Mirror. So Binance is a cold wallet solution. It's important it's on a hot wallet, hot wallet because a hot wallet can be touched by the internet and maybe some someone can then go in there and like steal your funds. But a cold wallet, on the other hand, is going to be more safe offline. The question, however, is how does Binance get their hands on the collateral when it's liquidated? Or how does the counterparty keep their collateral if it's not supposed to be liquidated? So I'll throw that one over to Sam, get your thoughts on it. This is part of their PR push, and it should be viewed that way. Um, one, um, the, the PR push to make it seem like they are safe um, with how they custody user funds. And I think it's also important to, um, for, for people looking at this, listening to this um, podcast or watching um, the TV show to, to realize that this is not for all Binance users. This is for institutional users of their custody platform. So this is interesting um, to me because it shows that both this PR push and the actual practical technical endeavor of making these reserves more, you know, bulletproof, um, more legitimate, um, the, the mechanisms behind them, it is going to probably be focused on these institutional investors because as much as they'll want to convince users that, hey, they're safe to go, they're going to want to focus on, on institutions first because, of course, that's where a lot of the big money is. And this is a pattern that we're probably going to see a bunch moving forward. Oh, so essentially this is for institutional clients. So when we look at what's going on, they're moving some of that from the hot wallets over to the cold wallets. As we can see, that 27,000. Is this institutional money? We're going to have to wait and see, but it's looking very, very positive. In my opinion, this has been something that's been played out for the last year. So, and that's the first time I've seen something of that size move over to a Binance cold wallet. So very positive. We also see this a result on Binance. We see that it wicked up to $141 
So what is going on? Well, we're going to find out over the next couple of months, but three and a half million dollars moving from Hot Wallet to Cold Wallet, in my eyes, can only be a positive thing. So there you go, guys. Remember, none of this is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I'm just here looking at market depth, looking at what's going on chain and seeing where the big money is moving. So there you go, guys. All the best and I'll catch you later.